now hot season is going on in the south asia and uh, here people usually refrain from the traditional cataract surgery in hot weather they think that wounds get infected and chances of uh, end of thalamitis are high so mostly we perform um, elective cataract surgeries in winters uh, whereas trauma and aculoplastics in summers road traffic accident is one of the most common presentation of ocular trauma usually i get uh, foreign bodies uh, stacked uh, in conjunctiva fornices cornea upper lid then periorbital ichymosis black eyes blow out fractures lid tears conjunctival lacerations subconjunctival hemorrhages corneal tears corneoscleral tears then high femur traumatic midriasis iridodialysis traumatic cataracts ectopia lentis vitreous hemorrhages or retinal hemorrhages traumatic retinal detachments traumatic macular holes traumatic choroidal ruptures traumatic optic neuropathies retrobulbar hemorrhages tersen syndromes now that's quite a list but i have seen uh, each of uh, these presentations now let's come to this uh, challenging case uh, this 16 years old male patient got road traffic accident uh, with uh, two bikes uh, hit uh, each other and uh, he presented uh, with he had uh, limb fractures uh, as well as uh, his eye was hit uh, and presented with uh, tense uh, taut uh, eyelids uh, with ichymosis uh, ptosis uh, proptosis external ophthalmoplegia subconjunctival hemorrhages and uh, severe chemosis uh, ballooning of the conjunctiva with blood raised intraocular pressure uh, or relative afferent pupil defect was positive tense taut lids now what are the top differentials in this patient uh, now he, he can have traumatic retrobulbar hemorrhage uh, traumatic orbital cellulitis uh, traumatic carotid cavernous uh, fistula these are my top three differentials and you can add uh, others in the, uh, this case as well and they the above three may or may not be accompanied by traumatic optic neuropathy as well so suppose if uh, this is a case of retrobulbar hemorrhage which is a serious complication uh, seen mostly in the past with retrobulbar blocks uh, for cataract surgery when the needle used to puncture the artery or vein trauma can also cause retrobulbar hemorrhage in retrobulbar block it can be avoided by proper aspirating back of the fluid before injection now trauma rupture, rupturing orbital veins is of milder intensity slow in onset uh, intraocular and orbital pressure gradually rise and can be reduced by intermittent digital pressure with ipad or closed lids or with hone on pressure ball and you can give um, hyperosmotics like uh, manitol oral acetazolamide if trauma or needle perforate the artery then it's a challenging situation blood rapidly accumulate in the closed orbital cavity and it is difficult to control because 
proptosis is increasing ptosis is present ecchymosis there is compressive as well as ischemic optic neuropathy central retinal artery occlusion with cherry red spot relative afferent pupillary defect you can see chemosis tense stout lids so in such situation from digital massage usually stops bleeding and lower down intraocular pressure now if still not improving then uh, you can give IV mannitol, oral acetazolamide, topical beta blockers uh, and uh, perform lateral canthotomy. Now that will definitely decrease the intraocular pressure and the retrobulbar hemorrhage will stop. If, if still condition is not improving with the above maneuvers then you can cut the inferior horn of the lateral canthal ligament inferior cantholysis and that will definitely relieve the pressure and uh, intraocular pressure will be lowered down if still not improving then you can cut the superior horn and now it will result in the complete lateral cantholysis now in majority of the cases up till this point the situation gets under control the intraocular pressure becomes normal and the vision suddenly improves rapd reverses if still condition is worsening which is a very rare thing then as a last resort you can stab the eye perform paracentesis to decrease intraocular pressure because you have to prevent retinal ischemia usually in majority of patients uh, condition improves with inferior cantholysis now how to confirm that this patient have got uh, retrobulbar hemorrhage uh, ct scan orbit or orbital ultrasound uh, in traumatic case will confirm whether blood is there uh, in orbit or not it will also help to differentiate uh, and diagnose orbital celluloid cellulitis and carotid cavernous fistula in carotid cavernous fistula you will have a dilated uh, tortuous uh, corkscrew conjunctival vessels uh, dilated enlarged superior of thalamic vein in the orbit and brui trail on auscultation whereas in cellulitis uh, you will have fever uh, uh, ophthalmoplegia and uh, CT, CT scan will show both preceptal and orbital opacification uh, CT scan orbit uh, in retrobulbar hemorrhage will show teardrop sign in which optic nerve is at maximum stretch whereas uh, CT scan uh, in uh, carotid cavernous fistula will show dilated enlarged superior ophthalmic vein so that's how you differentiate these entities and treat accordingly broad spectrum iv antibiotics with monitoring of optic nerve function tests in orbital cellulitis whereas in traumatic high flow direct carotid cavernous fistula emergency coil balloon catheterization via superior ophthalmic vein inferior petrosal sinus or carotid artery by interventional radiologist is the management iv steroids can be given in retrobulbar hemorrhage as well as in traumatic optic neuropathy to decrease inflammation and swelling intraorbitally so that was an interesting case so we have discussed uh, this case in detail and uh, i hope uh, you have got uh, an idea that how to approach such cases and what can be the can be the differential diagnosis and what are the treatment options of all these differentials thank you very much